PC Server and Parts has a huge selection of dirt cheap, powerful servers and workstations on their website and eBay store. You can get a basic 8-core machine with 24 gigs of RAM for just under 150 bucks, or you can get an absolute behemoth 40-core server for just over $500. 40 cores for 500 bucks. That's just insane. Use this code to get 10% off anything on their website. The code and the links to their website and eBay store will all be down in the description. You can get an incredibly powerful rack mount server off eBay for dirt cheap. A 40 core 4U server with 32 gigabytes of RAM will set you back about 600 bucks. I mean, that's just ludicrous. $600 for a 40 core system. I mean, it will cost you thousands of dollars to build something like that from scratch new. And all you really have to do to make something like that a usable system is toss in a decent video card. I threw in a, a GT 1030 into this system and it just works. It is a great daily driver. It is a bit noisy because this is a 1U server. Um, if you were going to do something like this, you would probably want to go with a 4U server, but PC Server and Parts sent this over to us for the project. Um, it was purely to test out this proof of concept um, and I would not recommend actually going out and buying a 1U server to use as a daily driver, so 4U is definitely a better option there. But I digress. You take a decent GTX video card, throw it into a 4U server, and you have a blazing fast machine for under $700. Now, why aren't more people doing that? I mean, 40 core server, 600 bucks? Sounds like a steal to me, right? Well, I think one of the main reasons is actually a misconception. A lot of people think that a server like this isn't customizable at all, and that's just not true. There are plenty of customizations you can make to a server like this. There are some limitations. For example, you couldn't put a custom ATX power supply um, in a system like this. But then again, most of the power supplies in these servers are beefy enough to be able to handle uh, mid-range video cards such as a GTX 1060 or a GTX 1070. Now, they might not have a 6-pin adapter, but you can always go out and buy one of those sketchy uh, SATA to 6-pin or Molex to 6-pin adapters. And I found that most of the time, those do work. I mean, be it sometimes they're a fire hazard, but you know, they get the job done. These systems also have extra SATA ports. For example, this system has like eight extra SATA ports. So you have plenty of uh, room for drives in addition to the drive bays in the front of the system. Um, the system has two PCI Express X16 slots. So I have a GT1030 on this side and a RAID card on the other side. Granted, this is a one use system, so I could only get a uh, single slot card. Um, but if you went with something like a four use system, you could actually fit a full size video card in that. Additionally, generally a four use system has a bunch of extra PCI and PCI Express slots. So if the system doesn't come with USB 3.0, you just buy a USB 3.0 card for like 30 bucks and throw it in there. You want USB-C? You buy a USB-C PCI card. Toss it in there. You need a better audio interface? Just buy an audio card and toss it in there because it has a ton of expansion. Reason number two is the form factor. I mean, this thing is gigantic. It's ugly. It's cumbersome to move around. I mean, you guys can see this is just a one use server a 4U server is a whole nother story. Um, so, I mean, generally people don't have any rack mounting equipment at home. They don't have racks and to just have this like laying on your desk looks uh, really ugly and unprofessional. So what we're gonna try to do today, and I say try because I am not very good at woodworking, is to build a decent looking, I'm not gonna say good looking because that's putting a little bit too much confidence in myself, but a decent looking case to put this server in. And this is a little bit untraditional because what I'm doing is I'm not pulling the parts out of this server and putting it inside the case. I'm putting the entire server inside a wooden case. I mean, the chassis is holding everything just fine. This is actually a really nice design as far as airflow is concerned. Um, it stays pretty cool. It is noisy once again, but hey, that's just the one you server. Um, so I don't wanna just completely trash the entire existing case. Um, but I do want it to look better. So the easiest thing to do and probably the most pragmatic thing to do is just to build a wooden case around it. So we're on day number two of the project. Yesterday I finished cutting all of the wood and today we have to finish all the wood because it is an absolute mess. I went with the cheapest stuff I could find at Home Depot. Um, it was like $2 per plank. These are actually fence posts if you guys haven't noticed. I have some unfinished ones right here that I haven't cut. Um, so this is what they originally looked like. They're uh, six foot fence posts um, and this was the cheapest thing I could find at Home Depot. 
Uh, this project is on a budget once again, so I can't necessarily afford, you know, to buy really expensive wood. Um, so this will work. It's just going to take a little effort to make it look nice. So now I need to go through every single plank I have down here and sand it down. So I'm starting with uh, 80 grit and then moving to 120 grit. Um, and I have an electric sander right here, which I actually didn't know I had. I thought I was going to have to do everything by hand at first, which would have taken like four to five hours. Um, with this, this whole process should only take an hour. The thing is last night the sander actually broke so I started sanding and it just fell apart. Um, so we had to work a little epoxy magic last night, um, but it does appear to be working now so I can finish the job. So I'm in the garage now and I have the space heater cranked up here on high. Um, most of the stuff I have left, actually I think all the stuff I have left to do can be done inside. There's not too much sawdust generated from what I have to do next. Um, the only reason I was outside is because of all the sawdust. I mean, it becomes a nightmare in here um, with no filtration or anything uh, when I'm actually cutting stuff uh, and sending stuff down. So all that needs to be done outside. We need to drill all of the holes out in the case. So there's a bunch of holes in the front panel, a bunch of holes in the top for cooling, a couple holes in the side for cooling, and then one big hole in the back to let the cables out. It is day number four now. I skipped day number three because I really didn't get that much done on day number three. Um, so we pretty much have everything stained now. It's almost ready to be put together. I need to coat everything um, in a layer or two of polyurethane first, uh, and then I'll assemble it. These pieces right here, there's one on this side. Actually, it's better if I flip the server around. So that's the front face of the server, right? So we have these two sections of metal that extrude out from the side. Both of these need to go because I did not build the case to account for these. These serve no purpose when this thing is inside the case. Um, so I'm going to have to cut them off. So that is the next step. Uh, and then after I have these off, uh, I'm going to start assembling the case. It is day number five, I believe, at this point. I had to leave for a couple days, and I just got back, so I'm a little iffy on the days. I didn't go back and watch the footage, so I'm pretty sure it's day number five. Um, and I just realized that I forgot to drill exhaust holes on the back of the case. So there are plenty of holes for air intake, but there are no holes on the back of the server to allow the heat to leave the case. So basically all the heat just builds up in the back of the server case, and the server's gonna overheat. Because this is the back panel, and the only hole I have on the back panel is the hole to allow the wires to run out of. Um, so that's a big problem. Now, I already stained this and put polyurethane on it, so I'm, I'm kind of upset at myself. I should have done multiple views um, with the schematic. Uh, a, a back view would have been very helpful because then I would have realized that, hey, I'm missing the uh, exhaust holes on the back of the case. I'm not sure what it is, but the edges around the drill holes are chipping really badly. And it's not just with this, it's with every hole I've drilled with these drill bits. So I'm not sure if the drill bits are dull, or if I'm just doing something wrong, which is probably the case to be honest, or if the wood's causing this to happen because it's just cheap wood, or maybe the wood's too moist or something like that. I, I'm not really sure, but it looks really, really bad around the edges. Let me see if I can get a close-up shot of that. You can see that around the holes, the wood's actually chipping up. So it looks really, really, really rough. Over here, not so much, but towards this end, um, a lot of these holes are really poorly done. The server's actually inside the case right now. I want to make sure it fit, and uh, it does fit. So 
Let me unlatch the front. And I did install the hinges on the side. You guys will get a better look at this when I roll the B-roll. Um, this is just a preliminary look at what we got going on here. So I put some rubber padding on the top and uh, below as well to try and dampen the uh, vibrations from the server. Um, I'm not really sure how loud this thing's going to be in here. I'm hoping that the enclosure dampens some of the sound coming from the server because the server is very, very, very noisy. But as you guys can see, it is a nice snug fit inside the case on the sides. You can see that it did scratch a little bit when I put it in. Um, that's those uh, little middle pieces that are still sticking out as remnants from the little side things that I cut off. Now, if I do do something like this again, what I'm going to do is allow the front uh, face plate to fold down so you can actually access the... Uh, hard drive bays on the front of the system um, because with this configuration you can't unfortunately and I did think of that I was thinking about doing that but I decided not to just to kind of save some time and you know simplify the scope of this project so now as far as you know personal satisfaction is concerned eh, it's it's okay um, right now I'd probably give this a solid C you know and and we'll take a look at what exactly is a, a tad bit off with this case. I've talked about some of the issues I've run into already, um, but there are one or two more things I really don't like um, about what I did here. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to wait a couple weeks to finish our ugly friend back here because all the parts from China still have not arrived. Almost all of them have. I ordered the parts four weeks ago and um, I'm waiting on a thermometer. It's a circular thermometer to go in the front right here. Um, and I was trying to find a, a substitute in my local craft stores. I could not. I was looking for a small clock because I thought they might carry something like that. Um, but for some reason, Hobby Lobby and Michaels didn't carry anything like that. In part two of this video, I'm going to finish off the case. We're going to throw the server inside it, run some benchmarks, see if it causes any sort of uh, thermal issue. So we'll check the temperatures uh, of the server before we put in the case and then after we put it inside the case. Um, I'm also going to install Ubuntu 18.04 on it. And then I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do with it after um, everything is set and done. Because I do have additional plans for this server and the case. Um, after we finish this project and I think you guys are gonna like what I'm gonna do with it So that's gonna be about it for this video. Keep an eye out for part two of this video I will post the link to part two uh, in the description of this video when I actually get it published It's gonna be a couple of weeks before um, I get part two pushed out though because once again gotta wait for shipping um, Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA computers and technology